Baths and showers, bees and flowers, chair and table, horse and stable, nephews, nieces, jigsaw pieces, thinking, rhyming, laughing, miming. Join us for fun and games as we play the uh, Mac Can you put the pieces together? Now, here's our matchmaker, David Waters. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Matchmates. We're glad you could join us. We're going to have a great show. In fact, let's go across and meet our players for round one. From South Granville, a boy who plays in summer and watches in winter, Timothy Miller. Hi, Tim. Hi, David. We could be talking about swimming. No, nah, it's cricket. Oh, cricket. Oh, right. Uh, I usually watch the um, international cricket of a weekend, yeah. and um, I, I go for Australia, of course. Of course. And um, I've been I've been playing cricket for two years, and I play for Barella Sports, and I've got two trophies for that. And my favourite cricketer is Rod Marsh. Tremendous. Do you want to go one day to play for Australia? Yeah, I hope so. You do. Well, I hope so too, Tim. Got to work yeah. hard. Well, you'll do it if you're positive enough, aren't you? All right. Enjoy yourself today. Thank you. From Hammondville, our carryover champ, Claudia Cabrera. <laughs> Claudia, welcome back. Thank you, David. Not only do you collect stamps, not only do you, what else do you do? You roller, roller skate. skate, but I hear that you collect stickers. Yes. How many you got? I've got around about 100 and I've been collecting for about a year. Mm. And I started off with a Muppet sticker. Did and you? just kept on going. Uh, where do you keep them? In the shoebox. My oh, shoebox, you, you don't? Stick them on things. No. They'd lose their value or whatever, wouldn't they? Mm. Then? All right, nice to have you back, Claudia. Good luck, both of you. There's the board, so let's get ready to go. Fingers on your buzzers. Here comes your ripper rhyme. I'm going to buy a waffle iron next week when I go shopping and make a pile of waffles with my very favourite. Claudia. Topping. Yes, my favourite topping, which is chocolate. All right, the ripper rhyme is your clue to the picture puzzle. Off you go, Claudia. Um, number seven, please. Number seven. Furniture obviously made for life on a small scale. And number 19. And number 19. Will the dog put the bite on you if you don't pay your milk bill? But um, it's not a match. So, Tim. Number three, please. Yes. A steerable radio telescope used by modern astrom astronomers. And number 11. And number 11. Mm -hmm. Jane, the radio telescope picks up radio waves emitted by stars. Good, Tim. Good start. Let's turn him around. The river rhyme is your clue to the picture puzzle, Tim. All right, Claudia. Um, number five. Number five, staplers. They're handy little gadgets that bring togetherness. And number 15. And number 15, planning a party. Well, these make tasty treats, but that's not a match. So, Tim. Number eight. Number eight for you. Led by Mick Jagger, it's the Rolling Stones. And number 17, please. And number 17. You've done it. Num no, yeah, number 17. Yes, Rolling Stones. Sorry, I missed that one. Very good, Tim. Good match. Let's roll them around. The Ripper Rhyme is your clue to the picture puzzle. All right, Claudia, off you go. Number one. Yes. Can you resist nibbling at parties, Claudia? I can't. And number 15. And number 15. Aha. Uh -huh. Good. All right, let's turn the party things around. The Ripper Rhyme is your clue to the picture puzzle. All right, Tim. Number 13, please. Number 13. Like the washing, the artist's painting is now dry. And number 20. And number 20. Yes, as large as life. Certainly not. It's a doll's house, isn't it? But it's not a match, Tim, so Claudia. Number 7. Number 7, yes. There's the doll's furniture. And number 20. And number 20. There's a little house to go with it. All right. Good, Claudia. Let's trot them around. Riff a rhyme your clue to the picture puzzle. Tim. Number five, please. Number five. There's the staplers. And number two. And number two. Well, at least it's different to a one horsepower motor, but it's not a match. Claudia. Number two. Yes. The bullock pulling the lawnmower there. And number 14. And try number 14. Slippery dip. Well, here the dip follows the slip, if you know what I mean. But that's not a match. So, Tim. Number 12. Number 12. Mystery sound symbol. <laughs> Two. And try number two. No, not that. No match. Never mind. Keep trying, Tim. Claudia. Number 18. Number 18. Discovered in 1839, the Australian city of Darwin bears an Englishman's name. 
And number nine. And number nine, a useful alternative to pins or paper clips, staples, but no match. So, Tim. Number five. Number five. And, yes. And number nine. And number nine, you've done it. Good. Good matching. Let's turn them around. The if a rhyme is your clue to the puzzle. All right, Claudia. Number 19. Number 19. There's that dog pulling the milk cart. And number two. And number two, yes. Call up pulling the llama. All right. Good, Claudia. Let's try them around. But for rhymes your clue. Makeup? Makeup's not correct, but never mind. Good try. Tim. Number 10, please. Number 10. There's Charles Darwin, author and naturalist of the 19th century. And number 18. And number 18, yes. Covered in 1839. Good matching. All right, let's trot them both around. Riffa Rhyme is your clue to the picture puzzle. Claudia. Number six. Number six. Washing Day there by a young artist. And number 14. And number 14. Slippery dip. No, we haven't got a match there. Never mind. Tim. Number 16, please. Number 16. Tree felling is much easier when you use a power saw. And number four. And number four. You won't slip up on one of these mats. Quite the opposite, but not a match. Never mind, Tim. Claudia. Number 13. Number 13, yes. Painting. And number six. And number six. You've done it. Good. Let's turn the washing around. The river rhyme is your clue to the picture puzzle, Claudia. All right. Tim, four left. Think very carefully. Number four. Number four. The water slide mats. And number 14. And number 14. You've done it. Get on the water slide there. All right, let's slide them around. The river rhyme is your clue to the picture puzzle. Yes, Tim. Um, my sir, um, my no, we missed the buzzer. We missed the buzzer. I'm sorry. Let's turn the last two round. Claudia. Claudia. Maple syrup. That's correct. Let's have a look. See how you got that. There we have the month of May. Replace the Y with a P-L-E and we have maple. Take away the C from cup. Replace it with S-Y-R and we have maple syrup. Congratulations, Claudia. That was also a viewer's puzzle. And it was sent in by Sandra Allison of Northmead in New South Wales. Thank you very much, Sandra. Tim, unfortunately, Tim, you were such a good sport. You did get the answer, but you got it after the buzzer, and we naturally we can't let you have it. But you're a very good sport, and you played terribly well. Okay, and we'll see you later in Touch and Tell. Claudia, good game. We'll see you in round three. And here's something for you watching at home. I'm an English author, seventy. My comic novel, Pickwick Papers, was published when I was only 24. Who am I? Well, give her the answer right after this break. Hi, welcome back. Welcome back to round two. Here they come, the players zooming in. We'll meet them both later. Before we do, here's the puzzle we left you with. Who am I? I am Charles Dickens. Four of my books, David Copperfield, Oliver Twist, A Christmas Carol and Great Expectations, have been made into movies. Another one was also the tale of two cities. Good movie. All right, let's go across and meet our players for round two. From Willoughby, a netball and tennis enthusiast, Jody Mitchell. <laughs> Hello, Jody. Nice good smile. Tell me a little about both, Jody. Well, I play for Willoughby United. I, my position is centre, and we've, I've been playing for two years, and we've played seven games and we've lost three. That's very good, isn't it? All right, yeah. well, nice to meet you, Jody. Thank you. Good. From Kingswood, a keen bike rider, Andrew Goodwin. <laughs> Hi, Andrew. Are we talking about motorbikes? Are you got a motorbike? No, um, just BMX. A BM oh, BMX. What sort of bike you got? I've got a converted Draxler. Oh, a lot of fun. Where'd you go? Uh, there's a place in Penrith called Hickey's Lane. Mm -hmm. Just around the road. Mm -hmm. You can go down there every day. Just every like, day? Yeah. You don't compete in races? No, I just race with my friends and that. Just have a lot of fun? All right, Andrew, nice having you on the show. There's a board, both of you, so we'll be going. Fingers on your buzzers, ready for your ripper rhyme. Here it is. Nowadays, on T-shirts, different slogans may be seen. One of them appeals to us to keep our country... Andrew. Clean. Clean is correct. Good boy. All right. The clue, a slogan you might see on a T-shirt, both of you. Off you go, Andrew. Number one, please, David. Right, right at the top. He's a man overboard. Number 12. And number 12, you've done it. A man underboard. Good, Andrew, good matching. All right, let's play him around. A slogan you might see on a T-shirt. Right, Jody. Number five. Number five. Has this pair got high-flown ambitions, do you think? In number 18, please. And number 18. Pawpaw trees flourish in the tropical areas of Australia, but no match. So, Andrew. 
Number two for you, David. Yep, number two. These baby sailfish will be more than a handful later on when they grow up. And um, number 18. And number 18. There's the pawpaw tree, but no match there. So, Jody. Number 20. Number 20. A heated metal element emits white light from a bulb. Number 6, please. And number 6. What's collected in here? Well, you name it, but no match. So, yes. Andrew. Number 16, please, Dave. 16. Quite a catch. A huge sailfish. And number 3. And number 3. A music symbol. Have you ever been in love? All right, that's not a match, so Jody. Number 16. Number 16, yes. Uh -huh. and, and number two. And number two, you have done it. Aren't they incredible? They're exactly the same looking as when they grow up. Marvellous. All right, let's sail them around or swim them around. A slogan you might see on a T-shirt, Jody. All right, Andrew. Number six, please, David. Number six. What's collected in there? Well, I think we know. Number 15, please. And number 15. Kites, flying is a lot of fun and something to look up to, but not a match. So, Jody. Number 15, please. 15, yes. And number five. And number five. You've done it. Good, Jody. All right, let's fly them around. A slogan you might see on a t shirt. Andrew. 19. Number 19. When not being worn, it may be kept safe in a box. Number six. And number six. Well, there it is again, but not a match, that autograph book. So, Jody. Number 14. Number 14. Leo Sayer, a singer who frequently makes the charts. And number three. And number three. You've done it. Have you ever been in love? This is latest, isn't it? All right, let's turn Leo around. Good match. A slogan you might see on a T-shirt. Andrew. Number 13. Number 13. The maximum score with, the, with three darts is 180. And number nine. And number nine. Neon gas emits light when heated in glass tubing. But no match. So, Jody. Number 19. Number 19. There's that ring. And number 11. And number 11. Can you name the dance being performed? But it's not a match. So, Andrew. Number 20. Number 20. The globe light. And number nine. And number nine. A neon light. Good boy, all right. Let's turn those lights around. A slogan you might see on a T-shirt. Jody. Oh, they both got it now, I think. All right, Jody. Number four. Number four. On this target, the competitors want to strike gold. And number 19. And number 19. No, nope, there's the ring. Not gold, though. So we haven't got a match. Number 13. Number 13, Andrew. Yes, the number dartboard. Four. And number four, the archery card. All right, let's turn them around. What is it? That's it. You've done it. You both got those at the same time, didn't you? Let's show everybody at home how we got that. There we have a ladder. Take away the L and the D-E-R, and we have add. There's a fan. We place the F with a V. Add van plus C-E, and there's a map of Australia. Advance Australia. Congratulations, Andrew. Good game. Good sport. Jody, we'll see you in round three to meet our champion. And Jody, nice playing with you. Good game. We'll see you in round four for Touch and Tell. Here's something for you watching at home. What's tasty, Italian, and in danger of falling over? Anything, but we'll give you the answer right after the break. Hi, welcome back to round three. You've just tuned in. We're about to play. We'll welcome back our players soon, but before we do, here's the puzzle we left you with. What's tasty, Italian, and in danger of falling over? The Leaning Tower of Pizza. <laughs> you like pizza? Mm. No? Oh, yeah. I love a marinara. You do? Good. Yeah. Right, let's welcome back our players, Andrew and Claudia. <laughs> welcome back. All ready to go. You for the big one, Claudia. And you're the challenger, Andrew, so good luck, both of you. Here we go. Connections. Boxer. Greyhound. Andrew. Dogs. Dogs is correct. Good boy. All right. The clue, both of you. Think back. It'll be of help to you. Off you go, Andrew. Number one, please, Dave. Number one. Does the driver get tips? Well, yes, if he pulls the right lever, I suppose. Number seven. And number seven, yes. You might describe this as the start of a swell time. Number ten. And number ten. Some say serviette, some say table napkin. What would you call it? But it's not a triple. So, Claudia. Number eight. Number eight, yes. If the driver is on the level, he'll make the grade. Number 15. And number 15. It isn't considered polite to push and shove unless you use a bulldozer, of course. Number one. And number one, you've done it. Good truck. All right. Let's turn all those items around.
funny men. Choose one, Claudia. Norman Gunston. Norman Gunston, the comic creation of actor Gary MacDonald. Think back, it'll be of help to you. All right, Andrew. Number three. Number three, yes. A boat-shaped serviette. Would it help you to sail through your dinner, Andrew? Number ten. Number ten, yes. And number eleven. And number eleven, may I expand to you on the subject of blowing bubble gum? But it's not a triple, so, Claudia. Number twelve. Number twelve, yes. Folded serviettes there. Number um, four. Number four. Because a horse is standing, it doesn't necessarily mean it's awake. And number 14. And number 14? Ah, I think it must be Batty, fancy slipping upside down. But we haven't got a triple there. So, Andrew. Number three? Number three. Yes, there's the serviette boat. Number 10. And number 10, the serviette in a glass. And number 12. And number 12, you've done the folded serviette. Good fellow. All right, let's sail them and turn them around. Choose a funny man. Um, Paul Hogan. Paul Hogan, a one-time Harbour Bridge painter who became a star. Think back, back, it'll be of help to you. Yes, Andrew? Just think. What? Think. Think. No, that's not correct, but mm. keep trying. Claudia? Number five. Number five, yes. It's no problem, just something to chew over for a while. Number seven. Number seven, yes. And number eleven. And number eleven, yes. <laughs> Good double. Good girl, all right. Let's turn them around. Choose a funny man. Jack Club. Klugman. Klugman. Jack Klugman. Oscar. One half of television's odd couple. You know, the odd couple. All right. Think back. It'll be of help to you. Andrew. Number 13. Number 13. The Brahmin cattle are a distinctive looking breed from Asia and India. Number 9. And number 9. Jersey cows are popular with dairy farmers because of their high milk yield. That's a... Yes? Good. And number 4. And number 4. Ah, oh, there's that sleeping horse, but we didn't make it. Never mind, Andrew. Claudia. Number two. Number two. The usual way for humans to sleep is lying down. Number good sleep. four. Number four, yes, there's could be a horse asleep there. And number fourteen. And number fourteen, yes, we're going to have a bat sleeping. Very good. Let's turn those sleepy triple around. All right, a funny man. Choose one. Rodney Corbett. Ronnie, Rodney? Ronnie Corbett. Ronnie Corbett. Not much of him, but what there is is very funny, Claudia. All right. Think back, it'll be of help to you. <sighs> we have our last triple now. Before I turn the last letter, before I turn around um, John Cleese, right? The first to buzz in, in the first five seconds, wins the round. Are we ready? Let's turn him now, please. Think back, it'll be of help to you. <laughs> All right, we have a tiebreaker. Number one, first to buzz in. Sit up straight, not without this you can't. Claudia. Seat? No. Number two. The word starts with S. Watch the board. And Spine? That's right. You're done. Congratulations. We untwist those letters, of course, we have spine, our spine. Congratulations, Andrew. You topple that. Congratulations. You've won yourself $50 in a savings account. Good sport. Claudia, you've been a good sport all throughout. You take away with you $150. Isn't that tremendous? All right. It's not over for both of you. We shall see you both in touch and tell in just a moment, all right? Here's something for you watching at home. From now on, Matchmates is offering a gift for any picture puzzle ideas that we use. So print or draw your picture puzzle ideas clearly on a piece of paper and post your envelope to Matchmates Picture Puzzles, Box 7007, GPO Sydney, 2001. Stay with us because touch and tell's next. Spoils are fun otherwise. Here comes the object number one. Aha, uh -huh. minus little things. All right, okay, here it comes, Andrew. Get a good feel of that. You can sniff it. You can. All right, pass it on. There you go, Tim. Interesting object. Could be anything, I suppose. Recognize that? All right, there you go, Claudia. You're getting pretty good at all these objects, aren't you? Now, I wonder what that is. Do you use that, do you think? All right, pass it on. Jody, you got it? Don't drop it. Right, now. Good, good girl. Okay, we'll get rid of that one. Okay, now don't uncover yourself. You've got something else coming. Treat! Oh, oh. Right, now, be careful because it still could be alive, so don't drop it. Treat him gently. 
Don't, don't squeeze its head like that, Andrew. Go. All right, on to the next one. Okay. He is. He's a nice fellow, isn't he? Okay. Pass it on. All right. Oh, Claudia, careful. Careful. No, don't get, don't get too close to that. That's it. All right. Jody, got that? Are you past you then? <laughs> no, 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 it's alright. Hold it with two hands, then it'll be alright. Right. He's friendly. See? <laughs> oh, alright. Keep the goggles on. We'll remove him. Okay, now, off for your goggles into a huddle. This way, Andrew. Whoops, you're going to break your neck. Ten seconds as from now. Oh, that was quick. You sure you've got it all? Yep. All right, they're ready, team. All right. Okay. Who's the spokesperson? Tim. Timothy. What was number one? Oh, the first one was a candle. What yeah. sort of a candle was it? Can't have you getting them so quick. What sort of a candle? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> stumped you, hasn't it? Wax candle. Wax candle, yeah, a long candle. It was a perfume candle. Right, you were right. You got and it. We, and the second one was a sausage thing, whatever. Ah, yes, like but what sort of a... What? They've done it, aren't they? Clever. What a clever bunch. I didn't fool you then, did I? All right, well, we'll see you, Andrew, in the next show. You three, we have to say goodbye to you. Bye-bye, Claudia. It's been great having you on the show. And goodbye, everybody at home. See you next time. And now, here's our matchmaker, David Waters. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Matchmates. We're we'll glad you could join us once again for a great show. In fact, let's go over and meet our faces for round one. Smiling faces, I should say. From Lane Cove, a busy musician, Charlotte Templeton. Hello, Charlotte. Hi, David. Busy musician. What instrument do you play, Charlotte? I play the flute. Oh, what made you choose the flute? Oh, well, a few other people in the family play instruments, and so I thought it'd be nice to play an instrument. And no one learnt flute, so I thought it'd be nice because it was something different. Oh, it's a lovely instrument, isn't it? <laughs> you Do you play in a school band? I play in the school orchestra. Oh, you do? Tremendous. Yeah. I've been learning for two years. I'm going to take third grade this year. Oh, well, lots of luck with it. Thanks. And enjoy yourself today, Charlotte. Okay. All right. Oh, carryover chap from Kingswood, Andrew Goodwin. <laughs> Welcome back, Andrew. Nice to see you again. Well, we know that you like BMX riding because you go every day, don't you? Yeah. And I also know that you collect stamps. How did you yeah. get started? Well, my mum's been collecting them for some time and, um, well, she's ha sort of handing them down. Oh, right. And I've just been carrying on. She okay. still puts them in. Yeah, you got an album? No, they're just in the box. Oh, you're waiting for a rainy yeah, day? I'm gonna, um, put them in an the album. Later. Yeah. All right. Nice to have you back, Andrew. There's the board, both of you, all ready to go, so fingers on your buzzers. Here comes your ripper rhyme. One of our public services, as telecom is known, it's the one that sends the bills if you're on the... Charlotte. Phone. Phone is correct. All right. The picture puzzle provides a public service. All right, off you go, Charlotte. Number one. Number one, our country's first international opera star, Dame Nellie Melba. And number 13, please. And 13, an Armenian elephant filling in the pink. But um, that's not a match. So, Andrew. Number two. Yes, from the Middle East comes this Armenian elephant design. And number 13. And number 13, yes. Good matching. All right, good start to the day. Let's turn them around. The puzzle provides a public service. Charlotte. Number seven. Yes, hands making shadows. But which is making which? And number 15. And number 15. Can you shed some light as to what this is? But it's not a match, is it? So, Andrew. Number 19. Number 19, yes. You might need to tap your resources to pay the water rates. And number 11. And number 11. Richmond Bridge in Tasmania, the oldest surviving bridge in Australia. But no match. So, Charlotte. Number 5. Yes, carved by nature's winds and erosion, a stone arch. And number 16. And number 16. She's not casting a spell, she's casting a shadow. But no match. So number seven. Number seven, aha. Uh -huh. And number 16. Yes, you found it. Good, good matching, all right. Let's turn that witch around. The picture puzzle provides a public service, Andrew. Charlotte. Number 20. 20 it is. In Australia, drafts, in America, checkers. 
And number 17, please. And number 17, yes. Right now it has an, a leg to stand on, but it's not a match. So, Andrew. Number 10. Number 10, yes, our riddle symbol. What lies on the ground a hundred feet in the air? Uh, which number do you think? Number 15. Number 15. Ah, no, that's not what we're looking for, never mind. Charlotte. Number 17. Number 17. And yes. Num and number 10, please. And number 10. We've done it. That's what lays on the ground with all the legs in the air, isn't it? All right, good. Good match. Let's turn them around. The puzzle provides a public service, Charlotte. <coughs> all right, nearly had it. Never mind. Andrew. Number 9. Number 9 for you. Peach Melba, a dessert named in honour of a famous opera singer. Number one. And number one, there she is, Danielle Melba. All right, let's turn them around. The puzzle provides a public service. Charlotte. Number 12. 12, yes, with lots of relatives in the east. This is the western Rosella. Number 18. And number 18, if you sit here, you'll get taken for a ride. But it's not a match. So, Andrew. Number five. Number five, yes. There's that rock bridge carved by winds and erosion. And number 11. And number 11, yes, the Stone Bridge in Tasmania. Richmond Bridge, in fact. Good matching, let's turn them around. The picture puzzle provides a public service, Andrew. Charlotte. Number three. Yes, the Eastern Rosella. And number 18. And number 18. Oh. The whole saddle, never mind. That happens, Charlotte. No match, so Andrew. Number three. Number three, yes. And number 12. And number 12, you've done it. Eastern and Western Rosella, it's all right, good. Let's fly them around. The puzzle provides a public service, Andrew. All right, Charlotte. Number 19. Number 19. There's the rates bill. And number 15, please. And number 15. Uh, bottom half of a lamp. No match. Never mind, Charlotte. Number Andrew. Number 6. Number 6, yes. And number 15. And number 15. You've done. Top half and bottom half. All right, Andrew. Let's turn them around. The picture puzzle provides a public service. Yes. That's correct. Good boy. All right. Well, let's show everybody at home and in the studio how we got that. There we have a ghost. We place the GH with P. We have post. There we have a jar of coffee. Take away the C and the last two E's. We place it with I C E. 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 And we have post office. Congratulations, Andrew. Good. You really had it, didn't you, Charlotte? Well, you had it. You were waiting for a pair, weren't you? But that happens, doesn't it? That's the luck of the game. All right, Andrew, we'll see you in round three. Charlotte, good game from you. We'll see you for Touch and Tell in round four. Here's something for you. Touch and Tell. What kind of sport takes place in a velodrome? Well, think about that one, and we'll give you the answer right after this break. Hi, welcome back to round two. Here come the players. We'll meet them very shortly. Before we do, here's a puzzle we left you with. A velodrome is an area with a steeply banked track on which cycling races are held. The word comes from the Latin velo, which means swift. I wonder if there are many in Australia here. Hmm. All right, let's meet a place for round two. From Cardiff, a very busy fellow, Trevor McIntyre. Hello, Trevor. You're very busy, man. Eh? What sort of things do you do? What is it you're busy in? Uh, well, first of all, I play soccer for Cardiff Junior Football Club and I've played for six years and I'm inside right, right. It's number eight. Yeah. And I play, also play cricket. I've played for one year and I usually play fielder. Yeah. And also I play athletics. I do athletics and I've done that for one year and I got a trophy for athletics and, and two for soccer and one for cricket. Well, you are a busy fellow, aren't you, Trevor? Is it all for the same club? No. Different, oh, clubs. different clubs. All right, nice to meet you, Trevor. Good. From King Blangley. A girl who's a real kitchen whiz, Katie Dudley. <laughs> Hello, Katie. You're a little bit of a whiz in the kitchen, are you? Yeah. What do you make? Cakes. Cakes, what, really nice fluffy ones? Depends how they turn out. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? Yeah. Kate, how did you get involved with cakes in the kitchen? Oh, well, my cousin's, it was my cousin's birthday, and Mum told me to go in the kitchen and bake a cake. <laughs> yeah. And you baked it? Yeah, and it turned out to be real good. <laughs> it was a success? Yeah. And now you're making them every week? Every Sunday. Every Sunday you make a cake? Yeah, no, every Sunday. Oh, that's a tremendous cake. All right, nice meeting you. Enjoy yourself today. Right, There's the board, both of you. So fingers on your buzzers. Here comes your ripper rhyme. Ready? A very well-known archer. Please name him if you would. He lived in Sherwood Forest, and his name was Robin Hood. <laughs> Hood. <laughs> that's all right, Katie. You hit the buzzer too, so I'll allow that one. Yes, that's right. Hood. Now, you clue both of you. Keep your mind on bows and arrows. Off you go, Katie. 
Um, number one. Number one. With these, with these ingredients, you can make a salad called tabbouleh. Very nice, too. And number 13, please. And number 13. To protect your shoes, you might wear galoshes in the wet. And number... That's right, no match. You're right. Good. Trevor. Number five, please. <laughs> number five, yes. C.J. Dennis, poet, author and collector of Australian slang words. And number 20. And number 20. Uncle Sam might save the day and save you money, too. But we haven't got a match there, Trevor. So, Katie, back to you. Number three, please. Yes. Is the cat warm and content? Yes, it is. It has a jumper. And number 20, please. And number 20. Mm. There's the Uncle Sam money box, but we haven't got a match. So, Trevor, back to you. Number two. Number two. The earthworm burrows beneath the soil and its tunnels let in useful oxygen. And number 16. Please. And number 16. Car wash, but not the mechanical kind. But we haven't got a match, Trevor. Katie. Number six. Six, yes. A clever money box that separates coins according to their value. Number 18, please. And number 18, tabbouli salad. The word tabbouli is Lebanese. But we haven't got a match, so Trevor. Number six, please. Number six, yes. Uh -huh. And number 20. And you've done it. Good, bunch of money boxes. Good matching, Trevor. Let's turn them around. Keep your mind on bows and arrows. Right, Katie. Number one. Number one. Tabbouli ingredients. And number 18. You've done it. There's the salad. Good girl. All right, let's trot him around. Keep your mind on bows and arrows. Trevor. Number 10. Number 10. Golden oldie. Somewhere on the board. And number 7. Try number 7. A close finish. Perhaps time will tell. But we haven't got a match. Remember that oldie for later. Katie. Number 19. Number 19 for you. Glugs of Gosh, an oddly titled book by C.J. Dennis. Number... Hmm? Number 11, please. Number 11, all right. A marine worm burrows in the seabed, not a garden bed. But that's not a match. So, Trevor. Number 2. Number 2, aha, the earthworm. And number 11. And number 11, well, you've done it, the marine worm. Good, all right, let's turn those worms around. Keep your mind on bows and arrows, Trevor. <coughs> Katie. Um, number 14. Please. 14. A cat that's a good climber, a Sherpa. Number 10, please. A number oh. 10. <laughs> All right, not a match. Trevor. Number 14. Number 14. Yes, there's the Sherpa. And number three. And number three, aha, there's the jumper. All right, but that's a match. Let's turn them around. Keep your mind on bows and arrows. All right, Katie. Number 12, please. Number 12, all right. They make a revival every year, the Beach Boys. Number 10, please. And number 10, we've done it. Golden Oldies. Good. All right, let's play them around. Keep your mind on bows and arrows, Katie. Trevor. Number 8, please. Number 8, yes. A solid business, yes, it's a brick factory. And number 16. And number 16. Somebody washing the car there, but no match. So, Katie. Number four. Number four. Puddles are no obstacle if you're wearing gumboots. Number? 16. Number 16. All right. Car wash? No. Never mind. Good. Trevor. Number 19, please. Number 19, yes. Glugs of gosh. And number five. And number five. Yes. Yes. Good boy. All right, let's turn them around. Keep your mind on bows and arrows, Trevor. <coughs> Katie. Number eight. Number eight. There's that brick factory. And number 17, please. Number 17, you've done it. <laughs> Building bricks for adults. Good girl. All right, let's turn them around. Keep your mind on bows and arrows, Katie. <coughs> Trevor. Number seven, please. Number seven, yes. Race finish there. And number nine. And number nine. About to earn some pocket money. He might well clean up, mightn't he? But it's not a match. Katie. Number nine. Number nine, yes. And number 16, please. And 16, you've done it. Good girl. All right, let's turn them around. Keep your mind on bows and arrows, Katie. <coughs> Trevor, four left, think carefully. Number, number seven. Number seven, the race finished. And number 15. And you've done it. Number 15. Unlucky number 13. No, it's winning, it seems, that one. All right, let's turn them around. Keep your mind on bows and arrows. <coughs> All right, Katie, let's turn them around and see what you've got. Keep your mind on bows and arrows. 
five seconds, Trevor. Yes. William Till? Yes, you've done it. Good boy. All right. Let's show everybody at home. Then we have an old-fashioned Till. To replace the T with a W, we have Will plus I-A-M, William. There's a shell. To replace the S-H with T, William Tell. Congratulations, Trevor. Oh, good one. <laughs> Got me. All right, congratulations. We'll see you in round three. Katie, nice game. We'll see you in round four for some fashion telling, all right? Here's something for you watching at home. This strange-looking boat crossed the Atlantic from Africa to the West Indies in 1970. What was it made of, and what was the purpose of the journey? Well, give her the answer right after this break. Hi. Welcome back to round three. If you've just joined us, we're about to play round three. We'll say hello to our players very soon, but before we do, here's a puzzle we left you with. The boat is called Ra 2 and was built by explorer Thor Heyerdahl from reeds of the papyrus plant. He wanted to prove that the ancient Egyptians could have explored the new world in such vessels. They're very brave men, aren't they? All right, let's welcome back Andrew and Trevor. Welcome back, boys. You ready to go? Good, all right, let's just do that. Connections, here they come. Fingers on your buzzers. Birds, shell, yoke, hatch. Andrew. Eggs. Eggs is correct. All right. The clue coming up, boys. Listen carefully. Concentrate for a spell and it may come to you. All right? Off you go, your first three numbers. Number one. Number one. Edward Degas, a French artist, captured the art of the ballet in many of his paintings. Number eight. Number eight, yes. If you have a designing mind, you'll need to look at things from the right angle. Number five. And number five, detail from a painting by a French artist. Who was he? But that's not a triple there, Andrew, so Trevor. Number 15. Number 15. Sailing, water skiing, for safety's sake, you should always wear a life jacket. Number 11. 11, yes. A life ring may be thrown to someone in difficulties in the water. Number three. And number three, olive oil. Can't throw that to anyone, can you? Never mind. All right. Andrew. Number 13. 13. The modern trend to use vegetable oils in place of animal fats, and they're much better for your health, too. Number six. Six. Yes. Yes. If you've plans in mind, these will be of assistance to you. And number 10. And number 10. If your brain's going around in circles, a compass will ensure they're accurate ones. But we haven't got a triple, so off to you, Trevor. Number six. Yes, number six. Mm-hmm. Number eight. Number eight, yes. Number ten. And number ten, good boy. Good triple. All right, let's turn them around. Choose a musical instrument. Trumpet, please. Say. Trumpet. It could well be the instrument an elephant might choose, couldn't it, Trevor? All right. Concentrate for a spell and it may come to you. Andrew. Number seven. Yes. Take your pick. Would you like it rare, medium, or perhaps all done? Number 12. Number 12, yes. Captured on canvas, the rigorous routine of devoted dancers. And number 14. And number 14, sizzling and spitting on the way to an alfresco or outdoor meal. Looks delicious, but it's not a triple. So, Trevor. Number one. Number one, aha, Degas. Number 12. Number 12, aha, different Degas painting. And number five, please. And number five, you've done it. Very good, Trevor. All right. You know your artist. Uh, turn him around. Accordion. Chew. The accordion? Right. Like the sound? Dare I say it's all accordion to taste? No. All right. Concentrate for a spell and it may come to you, Trevor. Yes. Royal? No. You keep trying there. Andrew. Number 14. 14. Right. They're the steak sausages on a barbecue. Number 15. Number 15. Ah, the life jacket. Number nine. And try number nine. As well as nuts to nibble on, peanuts are a valuable source of vegetable oil, Andrew, but we haven't got a triple, so, Trevor. Number three. Number three, yes. In European countries, olive oil is probably still the most popular vegetable oil for cooking. Number nine. Number nine, peanut oil. Number 13. And 13, is sunflower oil. Very good. Three little oils in a row. All right, let's trot them around. The drum, please, Dad. The drums. Drums fall into the group of instruments known as percussion. All right. Concentrate for a spell, and it may come to you. Andrew. Number seven. Right, raw steak there. Number two. Try number two. In the event of a water misadventure, this notice shows you how to deal with emergencies. And 14. And number 14, sizzling and spitting there, but no triple. Trevor. Number 15. Number 15, yes, the life jacket. Number 11. Number 11, yes, the life ring. Number four. And number four, raw sausages. Oh, that's not a triple, is it? Never mind. So, back to you, Andrew. 
Number two. And number two, the life-saving notice. Number 11. And number 11, the life ring. And number 15. And number 15, the life jacket. Very good, Triple Andrew. All right, let's float them around. Choose a musical instrument. Um, piano, please. Piano. Hammers striking strings produce the full range of notes. Concentrate. Twitch? No, it's not twitch. <coughs> right, you missed it then. All right, Trevor. Our last triple, folks. So, let's turn the triple, please. Ah, it's our raw meat triple. Some's cooked. It's our meat triple. All right, now, before I turn the last letter, remember you have ten seconds. The first one to buzz in wins five seconds. The first one to buzz in wins around. Here we go. Turn it, please. Yes. Which? You've done it. Oh, you got me all hot and bothered then, Andrew. It was a close one, wasn't it? We untwist those letters. We have which? Congratulations. Wow. There he is apologising to Trevor for winning. That's very good. <laughs> You've won yourself now $100. Very good, isn't it? All right, well, you think about whether you're going to come back, Andrew, and let us know after the break, okay? okay? Trevor, you're a good sport. Nice playing with you. But we'll see you afterwards The touch and tell, okay? Here's something for you watching at home. From... Hi. Welcome back to Touch and Tell. Before we proceed with the game, Andrew, what have you decided? I'm going to come back. Tremendous. All right. Try for 150. Yeah. Right. Tremendous. All right. We'll see you then. All right, team. On with your crazy goggles. Make sure you can't see. All on. Right. Oh. Here comes the first item. Here you go. Now remember, you can smell it, feel it, taste it. All right. Let's pass it along. Now, of course, here, Trevor, it's, you can taste it. <laughs> well, I didn't say it'd be nice, but a lot of people will like it. Right. <laughs> You'll like it when you get older. Nice. Do you like that? You're not going to eat it. Oh, OK. Don't say what you think it is. It won't bite Charlotte. Take it gratefully. No, just hold it gently. Yeah, have a yeah, feel it. It's nice. Oh! Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Don't look yet. We only have one touch and tell. So, into a little circle. Okay, goggles off. Ten seconds starting from now. Cool. It's big, so it's in my head. Oh, it feels like it's big. Oh, all right, team, any of your places here? Who's a spokesperson? Who? You, Andrew. Apart from something like... Oh, um, Katie, you can take them off now. Oh. <laughs> Good girl. Apart from smelling like dead socks, Andrew, what did you um, think it smelled like? It smelled like a cheese. I forget. Um, what did it... Who? Trevor, did you... Was it nice? Oh, awful. Oh, was it really awful? All right. Um, what, you know what cheese? Anyone know? Um, it's oh. <laughs> Swiss. Off. No, not off. Well, wait, I suppose... <laughs> I suppose it is off, isn't it, in a way? But what would its name be? Anyone know? Oh. No. Oh. Blue... Blue 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 Vein Tees, right? You've heard of that, haven't you? No. You haven't? Well, you've no, tasted, no. It. tasted it now, Trevor, haven't you? <laughs> we have to go. We'll see you next show, Andrew. Mm -hmm. All right, see you then. You three, we're going to say goodbye to. So see you again. And everybody at home, bye bye. Let's say goodbye to everybody. And now, here's our matchmaker, David Waters. Ah, oh, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon and welcome to Matchmates. Glad you could join us once again. OK, let's go across and meet the two players who are both boys on my right. From West Pennant Hills, a coin collector, David Ogden. <laughs> Hello, David. Hello, David. You can say it. Hello, David. Same names, haven't we? Nice. Yes. All right, you're a coin collector? Yes. How'd you get started? Well, my grandmother and uncle went overseas a lot, and I hadn't had a, had a home. Yeah. And they thought I should start one, so they brought a few coins back and stuff. Have you got a large collection? Well, I've got nearly an album full. Yeah. Each page holds about 30 coins. So Gosh, that's a lot, David, isn't it? You've got a favourite coin? Yes, um, an English penny that my grandmother brought back, dated 1878. That's very nice. You want to hang on to that one? Yeah. All right, nice meeting you, David. Enjoy yourself today. Thank you. From Kingswood, our carryover champion, Andrew Goodwin. Hello. Hello, Andrew. Well, we know that you are a stamp collector and a bike rider. I also found out that you are a model maker. Yeah. What sort of models do you make? Uh, I make aeroplanes and um, tanks and... Plastic ones? Yeah, yeah. airfields. Oh, I know, yeah, right. What's your favourite one? My favourite one's a um, motorised tank. 
Has it actually got a motor? Yeah, it's got a little motor. You know the ones that you put in? Yeah. Tour ships in it? Yeah, and you did it yourself? Yeah. Oh, great. And it works? Yeah. Oh, all right. Nice to have you back, Andrew. A pair of you. Enjoy yourself. There's the board. So, fingers on your buzzers. Ready for your ripper rhyme. Here it comes. To attend a university, a place you'll have to earn. When you're too old to go to school, but you feel you've more to... <laughs> David. Learn. That's right. Good boy. All right. The picture puzzle has to do with school and university. All right, off you go. Uh, number seven, please, Dave. Number seven, yes. The kind of shoes you may wear when playing cricket. And number 19. And number 19. Oh, you've done it. These shoes are made for the growing sport of orienteering. That's a good start, David, isn't it? All right, let's turn the shoes around. The puzzle has to do with school and university, David. All right, a bit early, isn't it? Andrew. Number two, please, David. Number two. After you've picked flowers, you may come to some arrangement. And 15. And number 15, capital of the Sunshine State, Brisbane. No match, David. Number three, please, David. Number three, yes. A roundabout way of getting things all mixed up. And number 16. And number 16, the distance between the jaws of calipers is marked on a scale on the instrument. But that's no match either, so back to you, Andrew. Number two, please, David. Yes. Picking flowers there. And 17. And number 17. Most dolphins are intelligent and easily trained, but that's not a match, so David. Number one, please. Right at the top. Has the artist taken a leaf from her own book and made a print from it? And number two. And number two. Picking flowers, but it's not a match. So, Andrew. Number five, please, David. Number five. Catch a clue. Cocky. You could even describe him as a vain creature. All right. And number... Twelve. Try number 12. The frond or leaf of a fern makes this attractive art print, but no match. Remember the other one for later? Off you go, David. Number one, please. Right at the top, there's that leaf print. And number 12. And number 12. Good boy. Thank you. All right, good matching. Let's turn the prints around. Mm -hmm. The puzzle has to do with school and university. Education? Right on the buzzer. Good boy. Good boy. All right. Let's show everybody at home. That was a very good one. Okay, there we have a bed. Take away the B, that leaves us ed, plus a U, ed U. There's a station, replace the ST with a C, and we have education. Congratulations, David. Good sport, Andrew. Well, that was a very good game. We'll see you, Andrew, you, David, back in round three. Andrew, never mind, you've won yourself, what is it, $100 now? Yep. See, you're wearing the T-shirt, looks great, doesn't it? All right, <laughs> nice having you back. See you in touch and tell. Here's something for you watching at home. Among the 10 largest in the world, Americans call me the Windy City. Which one am I? Well, give her the answer right after this break. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to round two. Here come the players. We'll meet them shortly. Before we do, here's the puzzle we left you with. Which Windy City am I? Chicago. With a city population exceeding three million, it stands on the corner of Lake Michigan in the state of Illinois. Hmm, seems that we're bigger than Chicago. We've nearly got four million now in Sydney. All right, let's... If you were visiting Wales, what would you do with a coracle? Go fishing in it, drink a special soup from it, or wear it to go down a coal mine? Think about it, we'll give you the answer. Hi, welcome back to round three. We'll meet our players and say hello to them again in just a moment. Before we do, here's that puzzle we left you with. In Wales, a coracle is normally used by river fishermen. Tiny boats which were once made from reeds, but now from tar-covered canvas. They also provide racing fun at some festivals. They also a gift for any picture puzzle ideas that we use. So print or draw your picture puzzle ideas clearly on a piece of paper and post your envelope to Matchmade's Picture Puzzles, Box 7007, GPO Sydney, 2001. Stay with us, Patch and Fell's next. Ah, oh, hello. Welcome, welcome back to Fashion Tell. Before we go any further, where's my champ? Come in here, Julie, quickly. It wasn't Andrew, David, it was... Julie, what are you going to do? Are you going to come back? Yes. You are? Come on, it's all right. We'll see you in the next show. Back to your plate. Right, touch and tell. Goggles on. Okay, make sure you can't see. Here comes the first item. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, here's the first item, David. Very interesting. Be careful. Sniff it. All right, pass it along. There it is. There. Look at that, Andrew. Got it? Mm-hmm. 
Don't tell me what it is if you think you know what it is. Julie. Mm. Oh. Right, okay. Kylie. I wonder what that can do. Can sniff? Not familiar? No. All right. Get rid of that. We have another one coming up. So don't take your goggles off. Ah, here, oh, here's an interesting one. It doesn't bite, does it, Michael? No? It doesn't bite. But treat it gently. Have a good feel of that. Feel it. That's right. Oh. Oh. All right. You can, um, go on, give it a good trot in the middle. <laughs> we haven't got you yet, too. Sure. All right. Sniff it. Oh. oh. Okay. Julie. Oh. oh, I wonder what it is. You just cried then. <laughs> All right. Does it? Kylie, what do you think? You can sniff it. You can even bite it if you want. Just a little gentle bite, no? All right. Okay. We'll remove it. There we go. Okay. Now you may remove your goggles into a huddle. You've got into a huddle. Ten seconds as from now. Got it? <laughs> All right. Okay, team. Down here, who just spoke to us? Andrew. Well, what was the first one? This one was the thing of your microphone. No, it wasn't. Mm. Ah, got you. All right, think, what else could it be? Yeah. What did it feel like? Anybody ever guess? Julie. Yeah. Camera, spot on. All right, that's good. Good one. Andrew, second one. Um, a pumpkin. A pumpkin? No, it wasn't a pumpkin. It was yellow. It's got a finger down. Have a lick, see if you can tell. Mm, say it? You don't no, know. No, no. Oh, anyone else have a guess? Oh, good boy, that's it. All right. Tremendous, they got there. Well, we have to go now, but we'll see you, Julie, next show. Other three are going to say goodbye to you and to everybody at home. Bye-bye. Our runners-up will take home a match-made souvenir from either Encyclopedia Britannica, Field Discovery, Airport Luggage or Go Australia. David Waters dressed by Keith Menswear of Sydney. Your devoted friend, Benjamin Chiron. Someone get the diabetics out of this room before it is too late. <laughs>